All right, guys, we are going live here. Second time of the day. We're doing these rocks. We're still using the core watercolor paints. We're still doing art from my 30 Cozy and Creative hand-drawn designs. Let's get started. Welcome to, <laughs> Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie. This is an afternoon or evening, early evening in the uh, Northern Hemisphere. It's probably mid or mid early morning tomorrow in the uh, Southern Hemisphere. But you know, we have people joining us from all around the world and I am so excited <laughs> that you're here. We have a fun, creative community that is positive and joyful and we are filled with joy to share art and share creativity and especially in this time when the whole world is turned upside down this is a place we'll call it an oasis a calm zen spot like these rocks on the edge of a lovely stream where the things in the world can just flow past us for a while and we can just concentrate on what makes our hearts happy and you know we need to do that so here we go <laughs> and hello to all of my fun creative community coming in thank you for being here and thank you for sharing these videos with your friends thank you for hitting that subscribe button if you're new. I am going to do something here. I was playing and I think my idea, look at that. Does that look kind of like the background there behind those rocks? Kind of that up, up at the top part there. We're gonna do some fun make it work type bokeh. And this is sort of the easy easy peasy way to do it. Hello, Kristen. Welcome. Glad you made it. And happy Friday, everyone. It's, it's time for a lovely Friday, right? I am using the core paints. These are actually from the tubes. I poured them in, just squeezed a bit into these different little pans and then made a uh, swatch cards with the names so that I know what color they are, what pigments they are, and what order they are in the pan. Because otherwise, you will get to a point where you're going, is that brown or is that, um, you know, is that Van Dyke brown or is that burnt umber? Hmm. Look at that. Burnt umber is the one on the outside. These right here, this is burnt sienna. This is Quinn Gold, and this is Nickel Azo Yellow. And look at that. They all look brown. You're like, ah. Uh, this one right here, this is purple. <laughs> this is the Diosinine Purple. And this dark one right here is the Sap Green. So, yeah, definitely make swatch cards for your, your pans, especially when you pour them yourself. Because when they come from liquid paint or paint that's in tubes, they dry or set up much darker and you don't know what they are. Hello, Shanelyn. Welcome. And Darcy. Hey, Darcy brought us donuts. Fun, fun. All right. So we're going to go in here. And first up, I'm just going to put a little pencil line so that I know about where... You know what? I'm not sure if I want it that high. I know it looks that high on there. Yeah, it's above the halfway mark. I think maybe a little bit lower. It's still above the halfway mark. I And you can't even see that line, so I don't know why. I'm even worrying about it, but it's for me to have a kind of a... So you can barely see that. That's going to be about the middle or top just above the middle of the one, two, three, fourth rock from the bottom. This design is the exact one that you guys have in the book. So if you bought the, the downloadable book with all of the designs, this is the exact rock stack that you guys have. 
I went ahead and just printed it out onto watercolor paper. So this is printed out onto the Arteza Expert watercolor paper. It's double-sided and I chose the smooth side for this. This is just printed on my Canon Pixima 952. 952.1. All right. So see, it's the same size and everything. And the ink doesn't run from that printer. Now, your printer may vary. I also printed it in draft mode. So it doesn't put as much ink down on the paper. Looking forward to some zen. Yeah. Okay. So I've got all the busy, la loud stuff out of the way now. I think I'm going to move into my calmer, more, more cozy and calm mode. This... I just picked up, don't, don't know why I just picked up this one, but this is the flat three quarter inch flat by uh, Mimic Brush by Creative Mark. And it came out of the Try It pack that I got my favorite brush, which is the number 12 round. <laughs> and I'm going to go in here. I am going to wet the whole background. I'm not going to wet the rocks. If I was if I was wetting the entire page, I'd just use my spray bottle and spray the whole page. But I'm not doing the entire page. So right now I'm just getting water on here. You can't hardly see it. The reason why I'm doing I did it also on watercolor paper is that the bamboo paper really doesn't I mean it does fine with the with a lot of water but it, it's not as easy as with a lot of water it really buckles this will lift a little bit it will warp a little bit but it it will be fine it's it's not as soft of a surface. The, there we go. The bamboo paper by Hannah Mool with, that I drew all of the designs on, it is beautiful and it's been working really nicely for pretty much all of our art that we've been doing, but you know, Sometimes you want to mix it up a little bit. I am going to, I think I can, no, I'm not going to use this brush in the pans because it's too wide. I'll show you. Getting in here in the pans. If you're very careful and you aim it up, you can get it to fit in the pan and get the paint. But, well, maybe I can. Maybe I can. So these are the colors that were on there earlier today from the first painting that we did, the succulents. If you haven't seen that yet, oh my gosh. If you want to learn about mixing green, that is the show for you. We mixed up a ton of greens and then we used a little bit of sap green. But there we go. So I'm grabbing some of the ultramarine blue. get it wet. I did not spray the palette or spray the pans beforehand this time. Just realized that. So we've got ultramarine blue. We've got a touch of phthalo blue going into it. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Just sort of get, get that paint sort of squeezed out. You don't want to put all that color in the in the water jug so look at that look at how much I'm squeezing out of that that's amazing isn't it all right total body smush in the pillows ah thanks Jan so and then I'm going to I'm going to gray this down just a bit with a little bit not that I wanted burnt umber or the, 
yeah, the burnt umber, which is this one right here. I want a touch of that to gray it down just a little. Boom. Just a touch of gray. Don't want it to be too grayed down. So we're going to go through here and we're going to go sort of walk this color back and forth up to the edge of the rocks. I'm going to let it just flow. We're just going to we're just going to get our Zen on here, I think. Putting some of that color in. I may take that up higher. It is going to just bleed through. We are covering the whole thing up there with with color. Look at that just just bleeding out. I like the I really like the core paints for how the color moves. And this is water back here. And there is a little bit of some darker tone. So I am going to grab a smidge of that burnt umber and just mix it in right here on the edge. So now we've got a really gray. I just want to get some of that in there. We are going to be using the magic eraser. We did that during the shows last, last month. We used the magic eraser for a couple things. We used it, actually, we used the magic eraser to make the bricks last time. And I'm gonna grab some more of that blue and just work it in. We're going to make that bokeh effect with the magic eraser. So I need to have a certain amount of paint on here for it to be lifting off. We're going to see how well it lifts off on this. I know it would have lifted off even better on the on the bamboo paper, but boy, it would have been it's so te it's so delicate. I didn't want the bamboo paper to get shredded by the abrasion of the magic eraser. I'm just getting some more color in here. I'm looking at that and just going, you know, I'm going to be lifting color out. So it's going to be getting lighter in a lot of spots. I love that sparkle that those, that everything there got. I'm going to take and just sort of, I need to bring it down. That's what it is. I need to bring this down a little bit so that we have some of those dots showing up right across the edge of where the water and the land meet. So I need to get at least some of that land. Might as well just, boom, go ahead and just do the whole land, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I probably should just make that all the way go down. And I am looking at this going yeah i like that i like how these colors are kind of getting on here a magic eraser it is it is a cleaning block foam it's like it's like a sponge except that it's super super dense and they use them um you can find them in the cleaning a area of your store just get the kind that doesn't have any soap in it you don't want soap you just want the eraser and it is great for taking scuff marks off of things and for uh, cleaning stains off of surfaces but it works so well because you can cut it easily with scissors it just I mean look at this it just cuts like that with scissors Yeah, so let's see here. I want to get a little bit darker. Might as well, right? Since I've got the the ground is dry or the ground is wet back here. I want to make sure that I get some dark behind the rocks so that when I paint the rocks, they'll show up if I leave light areas. I just need more color. This is a rocky, rocky ground. 
I took a, this is not my own photo. This one came off of Unsplash, but I have a ton of photos of rocks. I will go and get those uh, stacked. I will go and get some of those up in my Patreon, uh, the Patreon only web, uh, web page gallery. Ooh, look at that. Just dance that in. Goes whoosh. But just get it right up against the rocks. Leave some leave some light areas, but make sure there's some dark areas so that way we can show light and shadow. And it's kind of nice if we don't have to go back in and do the background anymore after we get this done. I think that the area up there at the top has set long enough. I wasn't really doing it to let it set, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's set long enough. We are going to zoom out just a smidge so we can get the whole thing top to bottom. I am going to actually, well, let's see what we get first. I'm taking a, this, and look, you do not need a circle to make a round dot. So I just took this eraser. I just dipped it into the water and squeezed it out. It is just damp and it's not a perfect. Let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. Ooh. We're getting those lovely little circles. It's lifting out. It is abrading the paper slightly. See, it's lifting um, pigment off. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse it. I will be taking and adding just a drop of, of just some white acrylic paint. There we go. But I'm just first going to go along here. I might turn this over and use the other end, which is a smaller dot. And I know that all the dots in the background of this are actually the same size, but you know what? I'm going to go like this and just make some smaller dots. This is really wet. I need to kind of dry it out just a little bit. There we go. You want it to pick up the paint and smush out. Let's see if I can get that from the side view. Where? Let's get that, let's get this organized so we can get that into the side view and you can see it better. Ooh, there we go. So right here, I'm squishing. You see how I'm squishing this and twisting? And I'm squishing and twisting. See, it is abrading the paper a little bit, so I need to be careful. It's also uh, redepositing paint, so I've got to... You can get nice Monet clouds. Yeah. What is Daunted? Wonder if it could be done with Daunted. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, <laughs> you're, you're changing, your, changing your tune there. Now, another way to get circles. If you don't have, if you don't have the eraser, you can use a template and lay it down and take a stiffer brush. Daubers. Yeah, you could do it with sponge daubers. Um, I don't know how well sponge daubers would lift it out, but let's see. I'm just going to go like this and run this slightly, slightly stiff brush and then take Ooh, <laughs> a dirty towel. Mm. This, well, yeah, it did. It worked. Um, this brush is not quite stiff enough, I think. Let's see. Do I have a stiffer brush? This is a, let's see. This is a filbert. I don't know. Has more of a, feels a little stiffer. Let's see if I can get in here and get that wet, get that brushed, and then 
daub it out without tearing up the paper too much. You know, that's not, it's, it's working, but it's not, it's not as easy as the sponge. <laughs> See, we can go like this, even take a smaller one, get in there. And it might be that I've let the paper dry too much. You know what? I've let the paper dry. I'm going to spritz this with water. Light mist. Light mist. Let's see. Grab this one. I may have, I may have talked about, oh no, there, see? The... We just want to lighten up some of those like dots of, of color. But the other way we can do this, once I play with that one a little bit and see. See, you can tell that I've, I've been getting a lot of color off. So that's not art or that, that is, that's art not poofed. You're Ray, right? Am I right? Did I remember? Please tell me I remembered. Considering that, you know, I only get about one third of the... I only, I only see about one third of the, of the posts that go that go by. All right. I think we're going to go back to the top down and take a look. Now, see I did get some of those those uh Excellent. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered. <laughs> That's always a fun thing, you know, when you remember something like that. I'm going to take a little bit of, I've got some craft acrylic paint. You could use gouache, you can use craft acrylic, you can use anything, anything. What I'm going to do is just squeeze out the sponge. Your tablet is, your tablet has been dying at 100%. That sounds like you need to do a, a full restart on your tablet, you know, where you completely shut down everything. I'm going to dry that and then we're going to go ahead and zoom out all the way. There we go. Now you can see. Now you can see the whole thing. I think it's going to work out pretty well. This is the Arteza Expert. Uh, watercolor paper, it is not the cotton paper. This is a paper, pulp, uh, wood pulp paper, but it is acid free. Oh, Angie, that is excellent. So you just wanted to say thank you for the inspiration. You entered two pieces in a local art gallery show. It's a fundraiser for a local organization. Well, congratulations on taking that step. So I'm just drying this off. Yeah, the Linda's workshop is January 10th and I need to get my, um, I need to get my, my brain just went dead. <laughs> that's on, that's on Sunday. So I need to check and see, um, because my live stream is set for 11 and I know your show is at 10, so your, your workshop. So I'm, I'm going to try and get there so that I can give you a viewer. All right. I think that's dry enough. Of course, I really didn't need to put that paint out so early. So I'm putting paint on here. And you're going, well, you're putting paint on a square and you're filling in circles. Uh-huh. Because we can do the same thing. And we can get those bokeh dots overlapping to get some of that brighter, brighter color going. You will pick up some, some colors. 
You can do this with just a brush. But I'm figuring these brighter colors, the, the brighter white, that's going to stand out a little bit more. I'm going to keep them the same size. Wow. Crunchy bits. This is just plain uh, craft acrylic that I'm doing this with. I want them to be kind of trans transparent-ish, but not really. I Really, I want them to be more white. So they really look like sparkles. Because if we look at those sparkles right there, the um, there's some that are transparent, and then there's a few that are really bright. And much more solid-y. Solid-y? Wow, that's a word? There, see, now we're getting more of that dancing sparkle type of thing going on. Need a little bit more on that side. <laughs> the paint dries really fast on the sponge. Try not to make a pattern with it. You know, like, try to make your, your circle sort of dance around. And try and try and get them to kind of go off the edge too. If you've got tape, use that tape. Go off the edge because if you notice that that reference right there, there's some little circles that are like halfway off, and that just adds to the the feel that they're real. Ha <laughs> Yeah, that that uh, that cup sitting on the edge of the bathtub. I just watched that part of the video again. It's like, what was I thinking? I was yelling at myself, stop, stop, don't go any farther. I kept adding more and more to that painting or that drawing, and boy, I could see how tired I was as I was doing it. All right, so now right up here at the top, it's really, really kind of blurred out. I'm just going to make lots of tiny little circly bits. Now, you'll see that there's, that's not the paper that's coming off. That's the sponge wearing out. That's one of the things with these sponges that they do flake and peel out. So, you know, just just know that these sponges don't last forever. They're kind of a one-use sponge. I want to get a bit more that light that was stacked up at the top. There we go. And I'm working the the acrylic over the top of the watercolor. I'm not going to be painting over those dots. So there we go. That looks magical and sparkly now, doesn't it? I'm going to dry the whole thing. And then we are going to there we go. I'm going to dry more and brush it off because there's pieces of that sponge that are sitting on top here. Just get that dried off and brushed off. I wanna do some splatter on the rocks, but first I wanna put just a base coat of kind of a, a warm gray. Not too much. There we go. Airy and atmospheric, yeah. And kind of an effect that you wouldn't expect necessarily when you're doing a watercolor, right? So I can just, I should just use a big brush and brush that off, but you know what? I don't wanna get, and I don't wanna get that acrylic paint in my watercolor. So I'm going to just 
take a piece of paper towel. This is really dirty, icky paper towel. And I'm just going to wipe that off. And look, the acrylic paint comes, even though it was dry, it comes off the surface of this coral plast. I have gone and got the coral plast board now uh, linked down below uh, on my Amazon store. It is in the art and watercolor tab. It's one of the first things on there now. And it is... I think I found one that was like five or 10 sheets of 17 by 13. So it's not too huge. And it was like five, yeah, five or 10 sheets. And it was $19.99 with a $5 off coupon or something. I can't remember exactly, but it, it's something along those lines. I, before I go too far, I do want to darken up a little bit more here. So I'm going to take that burnt umber and some of that blue and make a really dark, almost black. So if you've been around a few of the shows, you know that the blue with burnt umber, either your ultramarine or your thalo and burnt umber together make a chromatic black. So I'm going to put really dark right here behind that. And then it's going to sort of come across and off. I'm sort of color mapping in a few of these really dark shadowy bits. So I see that and then I see a few, this, you know, this is a rocky, a rocky shore behind here. Do I have a video about that backer board? Uh, pretty much almost every video I talk about, it's called Coroplast, C-O-R-O-P-L-A-S-T. It is a corrugated, like cardboard, plastic. It's polypropylene. It is 100% polypropylene. It can be recycled. So that's really cool. And you can find it at Michael's or any of the big box art stores, probably in the section where they do signboards. And you can find it in the hardware stores near the area where they do. Don't know why I just did that line um, in the area where they do the garage sale stuff, garage sale signs. All right, so kind of around that one, sort of doing a little bit of negative painting here. So I guess I'll just work that around like that. Ha ha. I can make it happen. I can make it work. We've got some shadowy bits up in here. There we go. And that. And then we're going to come down here and sort of dance in. A little bit of dark all the way out to the edge. A lot of times we stop before we should on where our lines are. And... It's best if you can get your lines to like stop at a connection. So stop at an edge. These ones out here, they're out in the middle of nowhere. They are going to get blended just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we, we I think we just have one Amy right now. Some of our communities, we have, you know, many many of different names of the same name I mean but just, I'm just sort of looking at it going oh let's see what where's that I think there's a bit more dark and then it's going to get probably a little bit more brown right there but there's a big dark spot right here too so that's what I'm going to do And I might as well take some of that really dark, go in. Now, 
A lot of my rocks are actually covered by the tape on the edge, so I'm not worried about it. I'm going to put just some of the shadow in. And then I'll put the then I'll put most of the base color on. What can I say? You know, sometimes I I start with an idea and I mean, look at that. We just start just start laying those those shadows on there. The rock boom all of a sudden starts taking shape. There there will be I will be deepening up the shadows. There is the deepest shadow on each one is the connection spot. See, that's why I didn't worry about the rocks getting too much color on them. Rocks are multicolored beasts. They are... I'm saying these rocks are, you know, a conglomeration of many colors. But I'm going to just sort of rough, just boom, rough scribble. Rough scribble in some of that color. Look at that. You know that nice, funny people are awesome. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, our, our community is full of nice and funny people. And very caring. And I love that, too. All right. So now I've got those basic -y type shadow shapes in. Not perfect. It's not. There's. I left a lot of bright highlight in it. I am going to take some of that Van Dyke Brown. And just mix it into that blue black color and I don't really want the outside edges all of I don't want my sky bits to get to get speckles so I'm just going to take and put you know my little ball my little uh, polka dots I don't want them to get speckles on them so I'm just going to throw some paper towel down kind of in a randomy sort of close up way here if anything gets out in the sky that's not a big deal but I want to just get some of these really dark speckly speckly dots they help to add realism to the to the rocks even though we're not doing realistic we're doing fun zen type of fun zen type of stones i am saying that they kind of all came out of the same river same area probably carried by the same same glacier from a from a mountain far away and i am letting it hit the ground i'm trying to to turn my 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 hand around and stuff. I'm going to touch some of those so that they don't end up looking quite. Oh, look at that. See, we can just start moving some of that paint around so they don't look polka dotted. But they look amalgamated with texture and and all of that. I, yeah, I do have a bit of a library. <laughs> I do. I've, there's, there's like 500 paintings here, paintings and drawings on my channel. 
and uh, I've done everything colored pencils to and pen and ink acrylic paintings acrylic gouache last year I did a whole month of acrylic April with the Turner acrylic acro gouache that was beautiful stuff it's so velvety This is a little bit more of the um, Burnt Sienna. So it'll give me a little bit of a different tone as I, you know, I need to just rotate the paper instead of trying to rotate my hands, right? We always say that, don't we? Rotate the paper, ro rotate your canvas. Oh, there, that's giving me more of that meridian Kind of like it came out of the out of the dirt that was there we go a little more directional on it let's take that off hey we just got a couple spots on the sky that's not too bad not too bad i'm going to just sort of soften some of that up not going to worry about it too much maybe those are birds flying in the real deep distance all right so just for my eye i'm going to go like this and just wipe the the paint off the tape so i can see a little better where i am and what's what's where and now i'm just going to take some of some water on that brush and just start to soften up some of those colors, some of those dots. Just get my, get my brush wet. That way I can fill in some of the rocks. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that blue with a little bit of that brown. Make a bit of a gray. My rocks are wet, so now the So now I'm getting the, the color is going to just start to bleed a bit. Very top of that rock is in the shadow. There's some spots of light that I see. And I'm just going to, you know, randomly mix up. So this is that um, phthalo blue and ultramarine blue that were mixed together with a touch of burnt sienna in it. And I'm just gonna bring it over and add it to a bunch more burnt sienna. It's going to be a slightly, look at that, slightly different tone, but because it's being mixed from colors that are already on here, it all goes together. So now that is actually, look at that. Just start building up those layers. Don't worry about making them perfect. Just get some color on there for now. So I see shadow coming this way and I see actually some darkness this way. There's a bit of some reflected light underneath. So let's not take out all that light. And there's a tiny edge of some light over to this at corner. So I'm just, I'm using the rocks that I see in that picture to start informing the shape that I'm getting. Thinking of a prairie scene with uh, Inkus, Ink, Inuksuk in the foreground. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know very much about um, indigenous art except for the Pacific Northwest native indigenous art. Let's see. That one? That's the phthalo blue. Because for several years, my dad actually did work for one of our local, um, one of our local indigenous tribe chiefs. 
he would do picture framing for him because the the gentleman had a gallery on the on the tribal land where they would do shows and he was also a master wood carver and would carve masks and things like that and so my dad would do work for him and he would give my they would barter they would trade so there was the trade of some antique ivory at one point because my dad was doing scrimshaw so yeah I grew up with lots of opportunities to see art and do art play with art and it was always play you know always play the height of, yeah yeah I I made a um, hummingbird a native um, Northwest art hummingbird with silver from my mom back in the early 1970s I was I was but a wee young lass and my dad had me because I was interested he had me come down into his studio and I would stand there and watch him work on things for hours and so one day he asked me if I wanted to make my mom a birthday present and he you know had the silver and and such and then he taught me how to do the engraving into the silver with you know incising the the design and that was a lot of fun and then right after my mom had it she'd only had it for you know a short period of time a friend of theirs had asked if she could buy it and they asked me you know well what do you think can can mom sell it and it's like well yeah sure you know and then several years later the guy the gal who bought it actually gave it to me as my graduation present so I didn't get the money from it the first time because it was my mom's but I did I still have it Just piling up those rocks, you know, putting in those details that, and I'm trying to keep it loose. I'm trying, you know, and sometimes, sometimes loose works and sometimes it doesn't. Underneath. Yeah, it was, it was very cool. thank you yeah it's it's interesting the way things work out I'm I'm not as happy with that section right there I'm going to get it wet and blot it out a little bit there lighten it up just a little bit come back to it after it's dried see the problem with the problem with rocks is that it's really easy to overwork them and they do have a lot of texture so I don't want to completely run out all the texture that's there so we have shadow it's coming down this way there's a little bit of something there I think I'm gonna take a little bit of red Mix a little bit of red in there. Maybe say there's a little iron. I want to change these. These are probably granite rocks. They look granity to me, but I kind of want to warm them up just a smidge. Not too much though. I tell myself not too much though. Do I listen? No. Not always. All right, that rock back there. I'm just going to kind of make dark. 
make the area behind it dark. Get this down here dark. <laughs> Get there. Argelite. Argelite. I'm trying to think. I'm not sure. Um, there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the geology that I don't, that I don't know. Um, Argelite. I don't know that I've heard of that before. I've lived here all my life. So, um, ooh, a little bit of alizarin crimson into that blue brown. Maybe that. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Um, I would have to look it up. Or maybe somebody can look it up on Google. Because I might know it by a, by a different name. I know that we have uh, what we call Northwest Jade. That was used by a lot of the um, indigenous folk. Okay, saying that rock is set on top of this one. And that one is kind of behind there. I want that shadow to show, or that highlight to show up. So I think I'm going to do that. I may be taking some of that white gouache in. Although I like that light that's coming across right there. I'm not going to touch that. I think I need a little bit more super dark down here at the bottom. Argillite carvings. Oh, it's soapstone type of, it's a soapstone type of rock. Yeah, yeah. As soon as Mark showed it to me, it's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of a soapstone. Uh, it's a very soft rock that they could do carvings in. So, yeah, Mark is home today. He, He was able to, to do the, the Google search there for me. Argillite carvings often depict Northwest Coast stories, mythical spirits, animals, um, or Haida crests. Yes. Okay. That's looking good. That's looking good. I mean, this one is more, you know, landscapey scene thing going on here. So. Building up layers on these colors. But don't want to. Yeah, see, they need to be dark enough to stand out from the background. I got this area down here too dark, so I think I'm going to just grab a smidge of white gouache. And I will see about mixing it with just a bit of burnt umber. makes kind of that that coffee color sort of work that in back here and then I can I can soften it out because that really looks soft and out of focus back there so let's let's get that a little more soft and out of focus and a little bit of gouache a little bit of gouache will do that. The only thing is, is that I will have to work some of that gouache into other areas of the background so that it doesn't feel like I just used it to fix a boo-boo. Thank you so much, Joy uh, Ray. Yeah, lots of fun. I'm just looking at the 
You just looked up those rocks too. They tell beautiful stories. Absolutely. So the uh, person that my dad would do work for, it was um, Chief Laluska. Um, his first name was Dan. And he was really beloved in the, in the local um, county here for having a, an informational type of opportunity so that local school children and uh, local people could come out to his area, to his gallery and to his property in the longhouse. And he would share stories the way the indigenous folk would do and with masks that he would carve and it was it was beautiful it was beautiful and it was really sad when he passed away oh wow look at that just i i have a little bit of that gouache in my brush i'm kind of glazing with the gouache it's giving me a bit of a highlight or low light depending on if I'm going over a dark or a light color it's mixed with just a touch of the burnt sienna and I'm just using it to give me highlights out here on the rocks in this in the uh, waterside area Let's grab a little bit more. This area right here still needs to be lightened up just a bit. Same with that one. Kind of a making a soft out of focus glow that you, you know, you might not know that you could do with a little bit of gouache and some watercolor. You can do gouache with watercolor and make many kinds of scenes and many kinds of atmospheric effects that is really making it feel softer a little more glowy let's see I want a little bit more of the burnt sienna in it there we go just a touch just a touch so I'm looking up here. It should be a lot lighter up in that space. Look at that. You can use gouache like a watercolor. And that's one of the really cool things. You can use it like a watercolor. You can also use it like, you know, use watercolor as gouache when you mix it with your white. You don't have to have any other colors of gouache. You can just use white with your watercolors. And say that rock is sort of sticking up. Just giving it a almost like mixing white would do, making an atmospheric kind of effect on an acrylic painting. Sort of like making a mist. Maybe a little more right down in there. And because we're working on paper with this, and this is just watercolor, you don't have to worry about it. Um, gouache, you don't really have to worry about if you make it too thin. You have to worry about if you make it too thick. And too thick would be, you know, like having chunks of it coming up. Then it would be too thick and it could pop off your painting. But too thin isn't a problem. Hey, Bonnie, take care. The Crudes. Oh, wow. I haven't seen that one yet. I know. Well, I don't have any kids, though. So it's kind of like I just have to be in the mood. I have to be in the mood for the Crudes. Okay. Okay. There's a bit of some light down here that I didn't see. I'm going to go ahead and just drop it down in. Boom, boom, boom. Down here at the bottom. 
maybe a little bit on top of that. Not totally light. That's lighter right there. I like that. I'm going to just, since the paper is wet, I can go in and now softly sort of carve this in around and diffuse out the edge so it doesn't feel like it is, you know, just a, just paint it on. I want it to feel like it's just glowing there. The sunlight is hitting the back side of this. It's kind of glowing out around it. There we go. I think I am going to just take a bit of that bit of that gouache, get a little bit more loaded up in my brush, go in and put some highlighty bits, just some random spots where the sunlight is hitting. Some of them I did leave, but it's, it's just not quite bright enough for me. That, 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 down here, I want it to be much brighter. There's a little spot of it right here. I'm going to say there's a spot right here on this rock. It's just a dull glow. It's not, it's not the super shine. Super shine. There we go. There's a bit right here. Again, I'm just going to, I'm just slowly working it in. So it ends up being more of a dull glow than a bright shine. Because these are not shiny rocks. These are river rocks. I love how gouache just all of a sudden gives you more, more weight to an item. Kind of like that that milkshake we did last night that was it had more weight to it oh Ruth I'm so happy that you're you're enjoying the calmness of this your hubby has built several of the little stone stacks in your front yard they're only between six and eight inches tall but they're adorable I'm sure they're adorable we have there's a house that's on one of my pathways that I walk around the neighborhood. Um, it's actually not quite my neighborhood, but I sort of figure that if I can walk into it, it's my neighborhood, right? So if it's, if it's within walking distance, it's still my neighborhood. So I figure all of downtown is my neighborhood. And this is a house that's downtown and they have a front, like near the parking strip area. I'm going to soften that bit up right there. And they have a whole ton of rocks piled up and they've got some that are tall stacks too. So I'm going to grab some of that Van Dyke Brown and some of the, just that blue that's still there. Because this is too bright right there. And I don't want it to be so bright. Same with that one right there. That's a little too bright. So part of putting the gouache onto it was giving me the opportunity to, to see it, darken it up. There's a bit of iron, I guess. Like I said, there's a bit of iron in this. They're gray. They're uh, kind of a, you know, kind of a granite. Maybe they're, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm making these stones up now. I, I kind of went far away from the, from the design there, didn't I? But I want you to see, soften up those edges. 
then it looks like it's just a glow on the paper or I mean on the rock and not something that you just painted on looks a little more natural when you can diffuse the edges that right there needs to be darker trying to give these guys a little more weight I think so that's ultramarine and the Van Dyke Brown I guess there we go I made it a little more grayed out but a little bit dark all right just look use your eyes Stephanie and look so we're dark right where it match where it meets up and it comes around it's dark right there and then it goes up it's dark right here and it's really dark there and it's really dark there see when you start putting those darks in start pumping up your contrast it makes a difference Just little bits, little bits make a difference. I tend to, well, actually I, I have a, I had a very eclectic upbringing and so meditation and self hypnosis and, you know, which is just meditation and um relaxation so yeah i i grew up with that i was i was my my parents were not hippies but they were interested in the metaphysical my dad was a karate instructor and so we We had a lot of that in our house. My dad would do the, the hypnosis stuff with me and, uh, I was a good subject. I trust my dad, you know, so I was a good subject. And when we did the experiment to see how slowly we could get me down to breathing and I was breathing, I was 13 years old and I was breathing like four breaths a minute for like 10 minutes my mom was like uh, that's enough <laughs> we're not doing that anymore the experiment has been successful you don't need to do that anymore so but we would do they would do um, you know like hypnosis stuff in the car while we were driving on us kids to see if we would like sit quietly for five minutes. <laughs> there we go. I want that to be darker. Don't want that to be quite so bumped up. All right. This top one right here just gets a little, it, it gets to be quite dark. A little bit of light on it. Not too much though. It's gonna be quite dark. Mary, you're a Reiki master or Reiki master. How do you pronounce that? I never have been able, I've, I've never felt comfortable asking anybody. How do you pronounce that? How do you pronounce R-E-I-K, R-E-I-K-I, Reiki or Reiki? Oh, hey, Leanne, welcome. You just got up? Well, you know, it is early tomorrow morning, right? in uh in australia you time traveler you it's just 5 12 in the evening my time on friday night you're already on saturday morning looks like you're late for the party yeah we're we're getting ready to wind up here pretty soon i want to figure out 
how that rock is going to look. I think that right there just made that rock stand out a little bit from that background. A little bit darker down here. Going to keep it light, make it a little darker right there. So I'm just, I'm using very little water. This is the, that's the Van Dyke Brown. I want the Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber and Van Dyke Brown, I guess, are really quite close. And the Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to darken that right there. Under that rock. Under that rock. It's going to come out and around. Interesting little reflections here and there. That one's reflecting some light. That one's getting a little bit darker. Not, so I need to bring some light in on the rock right here just to bring it forward. See? Now I could spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours getting this perfect and it would never be perfect so I think Reiki I can't hear you Reiki okay Reiki thank you <laughs> Mark just went and found a found an audio where it said how to say it. So thank you. And Jan, and Jan said it too. And Jan said it too. Okay. Well, you know, like I said, I only see about a third of the chat when it's going by because I start focusing on the painting. That part right there is too bright now that I've got that background. There we go. See, just wipe over that just with a tiny bit of dark. I want it to stand out away from that background. Look at that. Just that tiny little bit made that stand out. All right. Reiki. Thank you. Yeah, guys. You know, sometimes, sometimes I'm really good. And sometimes, uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe not as much. So let's see here. We are going to sign this. We are going to zoom out a little bit. So that way we're all lined up. Lined up to sign up. I think, ooh, maybe I'll... Put a little bit of the pen work on there again. And we'll zoom in. See, putting that little bit of pen on there. I like, I mean, putting a bit of rough pen on that, I think. It's reminding us that this is a pen and ink and wash. Oh, that's nice. See, just a few lines here and there. I want my my rocks to actually stand out. And these pens actually draw on slightly damp water uh, watercolor paper really, really well. So look at that. Just just a few touches. And then if I want to give it a bit more texture, I know I already splattered, but I'm just tapping a few little, kind of like little shadow marks. If the pen sort of slips a little bit and gives me some longer lines, that's okay too. That is making me really happy. 
it wasn't fe I mean I felt like I couldn't go any farther with the paint but that is making me so happy just tossing in a few of these little pock marks little uh, divots little imperfections in the rocks You can deepen up a shadow in a few spots if you want. So say I want to deepen up that little bit right there. There we go. Ah. Oh. A little bit of, just a little bit of pen work on it. Just sort of brings it into focus. All right, so let's zoom out just a smidge so we can pull that tape off of there. Let's get to that wonderful tape footage. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pull that off. And now there are some pen lines that are outside of, or ink lines that are outside of the painting because I cut this to the same size as all my other ones and I didn't trim it off because that's the way I painted it or drew it on the, that's, that's how it was drawn on the, on the original. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Isn't that magical? Yeah, the pen just made all the difference. So don't be afraid to go back and add some pen. Because look at that. Doesn't it feel almost three-dimensional now? Those out-of-focus bokeh dots in the background. I love this. It turned out a whole lot better than I was expecting it to. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out here. Make sure that you have clicked that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can uh, be notified when new videos go up. Also make sure that if you see a video that is scheduled, it has a little reminder on there. You can click remind me and they will send you a specific reminder for that video when it goes live. So make sure that you click those reminders. I am going to be scheduling the next... Um, from the 11th through the 16th, I have all of the thumbnails already made, so I'm going to get those scheduled. And then I will be working on the 17th through the 30th. It's going to be fun. I hope to see you guys on Sunday for the... We will be doing... So there's no show on Saturday. So if you miss the show sometime during the week, it's a great time to go and watch some of the shows you missed. Sunday, we're going to be doing this pottery mug with a candle. The candle will be lit. We've got a little, you know, like a cremini mushroom and a wood slab. I think that's plenty of detail. It's going to have a very gentle background without too much detail. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I am so excited. <laughs> Remember, if you are interested in all the designs, 30 Cozy Creative Hand-Drawn Designs, the link is going to be up in the iCard. It's over in the chat, and it's down in the description. It is a digital download, instant digital download, instant gratification, through Teespring. If you have any problems with your download or finding your file or anything like that, please contact the support at teespring because they don't give me any information to be able to help you uh <laughs> so thank you guys so much remember to go out do something creative take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you and i want to see you back here again really soon <laughs> Bye bye